So we have talked about try, catch and finally write. What we'll do now is, let's say in this example, I'm creating an array. So we'll say int a array, we'll say new int the size of this array is let's say six. So we have an array of six elements here, right? And if I try to access the fifth element, which is a of four, which is the fifth element, right? And if I send the value a, there's nothing wrong in that. So this is a normal statement. And if you run this code, we got the output as three and by. But what if by mistake, if you write six, I'm trying to access the last element and the last element of the array, as we know, should be five, right? Because index number starts with zero, it should be five. But by mistake, I'm writing six. And if I run this code, you can see it is not giving you proper answer. It is giving you an error. It's because you're trying to access the element which is not there. So you're, you get a new error, which is array index out of bounds exception. Now, this is not the exception which you are handling, right? Even if you are using try catch, you are not specifying the exception which it throws. You are only handling one exception. So in order to handle this one also, what you can do is you can write one more catch. So we can have multiple catches in our code. So we can say array index out of bounds exception. We can say E and we'll print the message as error. But I feel that doesn't look good, right? Because both these are printing the same exception, error, error. I mean, let, let's try to do that first. Let's run this code. It is working. You're getting the error. But don't you think we can, we have the same thing two times? So when you want to do same thing multiple times, what you can do is we can write multiple catch or we can write multiple exception in one catch, something in this way. I can just give a pipe symbol there and we can do that. So we don't have to write multiple catches. And if you run this code, you can see we got the same output. Now, since both the exceptions wanted to print same error, and it works in that way, right? And this concept of having multiple exception in one catch was introduced in 1.7. It was not there earlier. If you're using 1.7 in your machine, this will work. I mean, 1.7 and later. If you're using 1.6 in your machine, this will not work. Okay, so you can write, you cannot write multiple catch or multiple exception in one catch if you're using 1.6 and below. Let's go back to my earlier way of writing, which is having multiple catch with multiple exception. Why I want to go for multiple catch is because I want to print different message. I want to print message here as cannot divide by zero because that will make sense to the user, right? Instead of giving them error, which doesn't make any sense, we should be printing cannot divide by zero. And here we'll say stay in your limit. <laughs> it's because, you know, we are, we are going beyond the uh, array size, right? If I run this code now, it says stay in your limit, okay, because it is executing the second catch. But you can, if you, if I change the value of j to zero, and if I run this code, you're still getting only one exception, not the second one. Now, why not the cannot divide by zero exception is because as soon as you get exception here, it will directly jump to catch statement, right? So this code will is not ex getting executed. So that's the reason why it is printing only one error. But if I change this to four, and if I run this code, it, is, it will print the second error, which is cannot divide by zero. So that's how you can write multiple catch. But just imagine in, in this code, if you have, let's say uh, you happen to have one more exception. I don't know which exception, but let's say we have one more exception here, which, which even I don't know which exception we'll, we'll be having. Or maybe if I remove this thing, if I, try, if I try to do this, okay, let's try. So I'm assigning a null value and I'm, print, I'm just uh, trying to fetch the value. And you can see it is giving you an exception, which is null point exception. Now this is one more exception, which we are not handling. And again, we can write one more catch block, which will handle null point exception. But after writing that, let's say if I have one more exception, which I don't know. So in this scenario, it is always better to be on safe side, to use, uh, to use the last catch block as only the exception block. It will print something wrong. Because why exception is because all the classes, all the classes in exception hierarchy are the subclasses of exception, right? So it doesn't matter which exception you have, it will handle everything. So if I run this code, you can see we, we are getting something wrong because it is null point exception. So what, what is happening is, as soon as you're getting null point exception here, it is first checking with the first, ca first catch. Uh, it says, okay, I'm not handling null point exception. Even this catch says I'm not handling null point exception. This, this catch says, hey, I'm not handling null point exception, but I can do it because I'm exception. I'm the, I'm the superman. I can, I can do everything. I can handle all the exceptions. But what will happen if you try to put this in the front? 
Now this will give you an except this will give you an error, right? Because let's say you're getting null point exception. Null point exception is handled by this exception. If you are getting, let's say if you're not getting null point exception, if, if I say new int and the size, let's say five, so I, I will not have any exception here, right, on this line. But I will be having an exception on this line, which is arithmetic exception. So if you have an arithmetic exception, this catch will handle that, right? Because exception can handle any exception. Doesn't matter which exception you are talking about. So if this can do, this except, this catch block can, ex can handle everything, why do we need this catch block, right? And that's the, that's the issue it is, it is showing you. Why we need this catch block? That's the, that's the exception it is showing. You can see unreachable catch block for arithmetic. It is already ex handled by catch block for exception. So this catch is handling everything. And that's why you have to make sure that the exception catch block is at the end to make it run smoothly. So that's it, we can, uh, we can write multiple catch block and yeah, that's it. In the next video, we'll talk about checked exceptions.